Okay, so this is quite a common sort of question that comes up. You've got a skateboarder going down some sort of ramp, and obviously there's some questions that follow it. So as soon as you see like some of this sort of situation, like with a ramp involved, it may immediately switches you on to thinking about the gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and that sort of thing. This is sort of like the hallmark of that sort of question. So the first question says, state the energy changes that take place from this. Now this, it was a two mark question, and I think the majority of people on this question probably just picked up the one, because they didn't give quite a detailed enough answer. So to start off with, your energy is in the form of gravitational potential energy. There are no problems there, most people tend to know that. So, and that was being transferred into kinetic energy. Most people got that, that would have got you one mark. What most people would, wouldn't have on that would be including the losses involved. Now the losses are caused by work done on friction. So because obviously the friction will have a force and when that's applied over a distance that means that work will be done against that frictional force and so that will be the complete description of the energy changes. I mean, the majority of it will be transferred to kinetic energy, or a very high percentage of it, but this losses are quite a significant factor, which is why this question was looking for that in the answer. Okay, so the next part is asking you about the, like, basically the calculating the final velocity of the, the skateboarder. So immediately when you're, you're starting with a height and you're turning to velocity, it's a straight away some sort of calculation with gravitational potential energy and the, the kinetic energy. So m g delta h is equal to the kinetic the basically the kinetic energy at this uh, at the end, which would be half m v squared minus the kinetic energy at the start, which of course in this case was zero, so you can just forget about that term there. Okay, so once you've forgotten about that term there, we see there's a factor of m on both sides, so already we can cancel out our m's, and let's start putting in some information. Now you see in the question it tells you that it descends a vertical height of 1.5 meters. So what that's telling you is that the change in height was 1.5 meters. So you've got 9.81 times 1.5 is equal to half v squared, which gives you v is equal to 2 times 9.81 times 1.5, which means that v will be equal to the square root of that, which should come out being 5.42 meters per second. So that would have got you two out of your three marks. So the last part of this question is asking you to state an assumption that you've made in this. And obviously what we've thought here is that actually all of the gravitational potential energy has been converted into kinetic energy. But obviously in the previous question what we said was, well some of it will actually be lost as heat and that sort of thing. So the actually the assumption we've made So we've uh, we've assumed that all of the the gravitational potential energy is actually being transferred into kinetic energy, so no losses, or as sometimes you might see it written, the losses are negligible, that sort of thing. Okay, so the next part asks you why the acceleration decreases. Now, the reason any acceleration decreases is because the resultant force has got smaller. So why in this case has our resultant force got smaller? Well, let's draw a diagram here. 
So, I'm just for simplicity purposes, I'm gonna model your the skateboarder as just like a ball. It's not entirely accurate, but it's useful enough. Now the acceleration in this case is obviously caused by resultant force. So let's think about what forces are acting on it. So you've got a the force of its weight acting that way, and then obviously you've got the force of the resistance acting on it now. Now, if you think about it, the, the force that's causing it to accelerate would be like the, re, the result in all these, which would end up being something in that direction down the slope there. Okay, so that's in that position there. So let's consider this position further down here. Now we've still got its weight actually, right? we've still got the resistive force. And what you can see here is that the angle between the weight force and like the direction of motion has actually got a lot bigger in the second one compared to that. So the actual component of force um, that's accelerated, accelerated, the resultant force, has actually got gone down, so it's got smaller because it's being basically there's a, there's a much bigger angle between the direction it's being applied in and the actual direction it's in. So what you've got is the component... So the key part you're interested in is the component down the slope. Is actually decreasing as the skateboarder. The sense. So that's one thing. The other thing we talked about is this resistive force, this FR. Now, the important thing to note is that, like, the frictional force, what due to the due to like air or drag from the air, is proportional to velocity. So, another part that is going to slow it down is that the air resistance is actually increasing as velocity increases. So what you'll tend to find is there's two different parts of this and I think this this question was worth three marks and you can get two for the first part. The third mark which showed the real understandings so of the top level part is thinking about the air resistance as well and that's what you needed to do to get a, a third like a third mark on this sort of question so the next question asks you if the skateboarder leaves the ramp at b and hits the ground at c 0.42 seconds later calculate the horizontal tra distance traveled between b and c so the important thing to remember here is that earlier in the question we calculated the final velocity of the skateboarder as this and what it told you was that he was it was traveling horizontally so this is actually your horizontal um, velocity in this case so what you need to do is think about in this time when it when it leaves the ramp the the rider is going to be subject to the a gravitational force which is obviously constant acceleration so that means you can actually sort of think about using your suva equations here so to calculate the horizontal distance, S, what we're going to do is we're going to use the S equals U plus V over 2 times T. So in this part you're going to have to like, assume that the air resistance is going to be pretty negligible, which I think is a pretty fair assumption in this case given it's quite low speed. So what you'll find is U and V are actually equal to each other, so that just becomes... V times T, so I'll see 5.4, 2 times 0.42, and you'll get a speed of 2.27 meters. So what am I doing? It's just meters because it's a distance. Oops. Okay. Now, as I said before, the object was only acting under the like, acceleration of gravity, so we've got a constant acceleration in the vertical direction of g. 
And obviously it told you that the skateboarder left the ramp travelling horizontally, which must mean that the initial component of velocity in the vertical direction u must be zero. We know that if it's just acting under gravity, a would just be g. So in the previous part of the question, I told you t was not point four two. So let's use our Sumer equation if v was u plus a t. So we sub the numbers into that. So we've got zero plus three point eight one times not point four two is equal to c four point one one meters seconds through the minus one. Okay, nice and simple there. Okay, so the final part wants you to find the magnitude of the resultant velocity immediately before impact. So what we've got there currently is that the skateboarder has a horizontal component going across, which we calculated earlier, and it has a vertical component going down, which we had at home. So what that's going to do is, obviously we've drawn those up tip to tail, we're going to have a resultant uh, velocity going this way. So if we look back at our previous questions, we calculated this as being 5.42 meters per second. And we got this one as being 4.11 per second. When I'm actually doing these calculations, I would use the unrounded versions from my earlier calculations, but just to show you what I'm using where, I'm just going to write those values down there. So what we're trying eventually trying to get to is the result of v. And using our Pythagoras theorem rules, we know that the, the hypotenuse squared, or this, the longer side squared, is changed with the sum of the squares for the other side. So it's 5.2 squared plus 0.11 squared. And then, obviously, putting the numbers into that and then Square rooting it gives you a v of six point seven eight meters per second, and that should give you that. Obviously, it could have asked you for the angle in here, for instance, which obviously you'd calculate by taking the inverse sine of. 5.2 divided by 6.78, but it didn't ask you for that in this case, so obviously I'm going to stop around about there.